Hello, I'm Carol Rosen, and I'm in Arizona right now at the 20th anniversary of the Disclosure Project, where I was a witness in Washington, D.C. in May 2001. At that event, I spoke for Werner von Braun. I gave his warning to the world that there was going to be a fake alien invasion. He called it the last card, the last card that would be played in the entire war game, which has scenarios of formulas for wars, enemies, sanctions, fighting, killing, leapfrogging the technology. Von Braun, the father of rocketry, when I became the first woman executive in that aerospace industry, Von Braun taught me and gave me his deathbed assignment to prevent the placement of weapons in outer space. In the last few decades, since 1974, when I met Werner von Braun, I have been on a huge journey that led me to this meeting in Arizona that's being conducted by Dr. Stephen Greer. We're in a state of emergency. This is why I came here to meet the people who were dealing with this emergency, who are trying to get the truth out about the extraterrestrial, other dimensional beings, the reality of the truth of what most people are not aware of in our earthbound scenarios. This meeting has been one of the pivotal moments in my life, and it is the pivotal, pivotal moment in history when you will be able to see, after you listen to some of the speakers here, that we have one chance in history to prevent the placement of weapons in outer space so that we can open up space so that our neighbors can come in safely, so that a new awareness and a raising of consciousness, a new group of technologies can be applied now to solving the problems on the planet instead of to being used primarily for competition in the form of war games that this is the pivotal moment in history when we can literally pivot from peace to space, not just peace away from war, but peace in space that will bring it to Earth and maintain the peace and cooperative ventures in outer space. So I came here to give a reminder about that warning of Werner von Braun, that the last card is being played right now. You're seeing it in the media. You're seeing faked pictures. You can't tell whether a UFO is a real one or not. They're not even UFOs. They're identified. Dr. Greer is explaining at this event that there are so many that are man-made. It's the old game of having to have the next enemy so that you have an enemy that you can keep building the war game against, keep that economy going, and dominate and control the entire space around all of us. And I know some of you, if you're aware of it, are noticing that we're being controlled right on this planet in so many different ways. Werner von Braun wanted to open that up. He worked under Hitler. He, he actually learned that from experience, we can use the technology for the good or for war. And we will never, ever be safe if we escalate the arms race into that place above all of our heads. So if we want peace then, I decided that I would go to the enemies, and the first one I went to was Russia. And I met even with people right around President Andropov. That's how far back I go into the early 80s. Andropov sent me a quote that the Russians were ready to sign a treaty to ban all space-based weapons. All. You don't have to list them all. Just say all. That was in a book I wrote called Space Careers, which has since been taken away by some businessmen and gutted, and they used the same title and put out a sterilized version. In other words, a lot of the information that we have going out is being spun and twisted to fit the old narratives. But when I heard Andropov's statement, I thought, who can I meet? And I met a lot of Russians who have awareness of all the different issues that are presenting serious problems on this planet that are causing us to go into a state of extinction at an accelerated rate right now. Well, I started meeting the experts in Russia. Oh, don't trust the Russians. Well, I never had anything twisted in Russia. In the United States where I live, there's a huge momentum to close off even access to space without permission without the United States and allies dominating and controlling space. So there's an enemy mentality. 
Well, I could go on with that scenario for a long time and explain it further, but I think most of you listening to this know what I'm talking about. The problem is we don't see a way out of it if we're looking for earthbound solutions, which leads me to then talking about the treaty that was introduced by Russia and China decades ago. It's been called for over and over again. It's been updated in 2008, 2014. It's now ready to be signed into a binding world law, and that's all we need to get done. But how do we get that done? Do we have a peace president? Since we have in the United States been at war for 93% of our time since 1776 when this country was formed. We don't have a peace president. And I'm calling on the leaders of the world right now, as are some of the people who put together over 100 of them who are now committed to not be the first to place weapons in outer space, on now finding a leader who will put them together to sign this treaty, send it to the United Nations Secretary General, who will then announce that we have a binding world law to prevent the placement of weapons in outer space. This treaty exists. It's on my website, peaceinspace.com. That's been put together by experts all over the world. If you look down the news section, you'll see some of these experts, many from Russia and China. And I also have that same information multiplied over with including 700 plus videos of speeches from the Ziegel's readings that have been put together by Professor Alexander Simonov in Russia. Hundreds of people coming twice a year to Russia to give their talks about different issue areas that have solutions, but that now are suffering with extreme problems. And I've met so many people in Russia, in the office of the president, uh, Vladimir Irmekov, who speaks English, came to me last time in December 2019 when I was there and whispered in my ear, you know, Carol, we had the same conversation 35 years ago. The only difference is that now I have grandchildren. Well, I haven't had children. I have 400 million orphans, however. I see hundreds of species disappearing every week. I see earth changes that are so dangerous and people are suffering all over the world. And are we prepared? Well, the theme of the war game is prepare for war, prepare to win. I say that the space force, the space forces have a new role to play. They need to be a force, but a force now to solve these urgent problems. They have the technology in the military, industrial, lab, university, intelligence community, NASA, and other international space and defense agencies and intelligence community to use the technologies and our highest consciousness to solve these problems. But we need to do it fast because the extinction process is well underway and it's in an accelerated motion. If, however, we look at these solutions in an earthbound way and we don't consider that we have neighbors that have come here from enormous distances and they're not using fossil fuels, if we don't consider our neighbors and being able to meet them officially, millions of people have, the evidence is there. We are not alone in the universes. So why is this being blocked? Well, of course we know. It's a small little group, some call it a cabal or whatever you want to call it, that now is putting together the next phase, the most dangerous phase, mind control technology, technology and weapons that most people have never even dreamed of that can and will inevitably add to the destruction of the entire human species. Do we really want to kiss the children goodbye? Do we really want to watch the, watch the deterioration and destruction, the wars continue? Well, I don't think most people do. There may be a few who like the violence, who are teaching the children through the media and our ridiculous computer games and television shows now to continue accepting violence as part of our culture. Or we can get smart and support a treaty that will prevent the placement of weapons in outer space, maintain space as a cooperative arena, invite our neighbors in without fear because there is zero evidence that's real other than the spins and lies and misinterpretations, perspectives and belief systems that teach people that you should fear 
some enemy every day. We have changed enemies. Notice? Well, we can allow that to happen with our neighbors in space. Anyone who is aware knows they come in peace. Don't listen to the lies on the TV. Dr. Greer is, in fact, with all of his many witnesses around the world, now trying to speed up the educational process to let people know what the truth is. It's very difficult to discern for the truth, but it's there. I feel very fortunate to be exposed to it through Dr. Greer as a witness exposing the Von Braun lie that he tried to warn people about, that the last card would be played, which is the alien threat card. There is no threat from outer space to us on Earth. It's different in space. Even the militarization of space does not yet include a whole big mandate and applications to weaponize space. We want to prevent the weaponization of space. The militarization has already happened. You can't get into space without the military. And the military has a fine, wonderful purpose. There are, cap uh, there are capitalists all over the world, so let's find a new way to apply that technology and the products and services, create more jobs than ever before, but that are not geared to in any way having to compromise people's hearts and minds who are working on various elements of these weapon systems. No, we have a chance to change the game. So my call here is for those who are listening who have the inclination to do this to let's contact, let's just pick one thing we can do. How about contacting President Putin, who has many, many times, along with the Chinese, you know, our most recent enemies too, they're not, to the call to sign this binding world law to prevent the placement of weapons in space so that space will open up our consciousness and technologies for the good. This is where the pivot in history takes place. If you're tapped by this pivot, if you want peace to prevail, no, it can't prevail if they put weapons in space. We're, we've learned our lessons with war, most of us, with weapons. They're not going to make us more secure. It's ridiculous. It's a child's game. Let's find the grown-ups who are willing to now accept a responsibility to contact the world leaders. I'm choosing right now President Putin because he has many times called for this treaty and so have his colleagues, the foreign ministers of both Russia, who has called on foreign ministers around the world. They've committed to not be the first to place weapons in space. I'm calling on President Putin to become the first peace president. Maybe you can help us do that. Look for the information that's coming out of the, this anniversary of the Disclosure Project, the 20th year of it. Look for it, because the people here are discerning for what the truth is. They are coming up with real evidence. It doesn't have to do the old-fashioned scientific method, because if I tell you right now, which I am, that I've had extraterrestrial beings come through the wall and have a conversation with me for hours, who's going to put that in the scientific method and prove that I'm telling the truth? A lie detector? How about millions of people that have these other kinds of stories? I don't have a biblical slant to it. I don't have a perspective or interpretation. I'm presenting the truth. I'm one of the many hundreds of truth tellers that have been collected through the Disclosure Project. We're all learning. We're all educators. Now's the time for us to spread the word through the media, through all of your networks, that there is a reality that's all based on the truth but it starts with the cosmic truth so that we can have the truth prevail on Earth. It starts with maintaining the peace in outer space, which means banning all space-based weapons. And now we have a treaty that's posted on peaceinspace.com. Look at for it, read that treaty. It was actually designed by first Russia and China experts. Look at the news that's in that section. Go to the Russian website, the link of which is at the bottom of the introduction section. I know this is a lot of information, but it, any part of it is going to lead you to an opening of how to get out of the mess that we're in. The Russian website link is at the bottom of that introduction pa page of peaceinspace.com. And spread the information that's the truth. You are being tapped by it now, even just listening to this one little piece we have had 
all the experts of Russia calling for this for many decades. In Russia, hundreds of leaders, around, over 100 leaders around the world who are calling for it. Let's hope that the United States and the Allies, quote, uh, join in. But if they don't, there will be a binding world law and there are consequences for not following the universal laws and principles upon which this treaty is based. Thank you for listening. Please now know that it's not about talking. It's about talking to present and stimulate action. So what I'm calling for and the world is calling for, begging for, in this emergency crisis situation that we're in on so many levels and so many subject areas, so many cultures, people of all ages are suffering. Let's all work for the action now. And I would like to call on the focus being on the treaty to prevent the placement of weapons in outer space, get the leaders to sign it now, send it to the Secretary General of the United Nations who will then announce this law. And I'll leave you with one little cheese message. The last night that I was in Russia in December 2019, I was taken to a restaurant called Cheese. And I was looking around at this amazing restaurant with orchids and every course was delicious cheese and wines. And they said, the Russian colleagues of mine said, you know what the message is? Sanctions. You want to sanction Russia? Well, now they weren't sanctioned. They weren't allowed to get cheese and wine. Now they have the best cheese and wine. They have technologies that they've been sanctioned from buying sanctions as part of a war game. Confrontation is part of a war game. We don't have time for compromise and discussion about this. We all want peace. There's no question. And everything that goes around it, the healings that we need from diseases that are spreading, the food, the water that needs to be clean and healthy. We can have it, but we have to act fast. We're at the moment. This is the crisis that brings us together. Please, please go and read that treaty. Look at the information coming out of the Disclosure Project and wherever you can find it where you can discern. Spread the word about the CE5s. You'll find out about that where you can actually look up to the stars. Maybe you'll be contacted too. There's no one that's being contacted that doesn't fall into a perspective, interpretation, or belief system who is getting the message clearly that we have no enemies in outer space. There are no hostile extraterrestrial beings. Learn about the dimensional qualities of beings. No, learn what's happening. There's a whole huge universe, universes, of new information. It's exciting. And the extinction process isn't. So I'm leaving you with the thought that we can have peace on Earth if we can maintain it in outer space, invite our neighbors in, get to know that that is a reality. We are not alone, and there is no hostility. There are no neighbors that are hostile or threats from space. One more thing on the website, you'll hear, for example, General Ivashov, and a live general calling for us to understand that we are not alone on the planet and that there is no threat from the extraterrestrial beings. Thank you. We're all together as one family. That's not rhetoric, it's the truth, but it extends into outer space. And now we have a tool, this treaty, that you'll read on peaceandspace.com and support, call on the leaders. I'm calling on President Putin right now to lead the way and become our first planetary peace president. And may peace prevail in space so that we can have peace on Earth. Thank you.